Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna start our discussion of functions of several variables. What we will talk about functions that include more than two variables, our primary focus is gonna be on functions of two variables. So the definition for a function of two variables really isn't too different than what we saw for a function of one variable. So a function f of two variables is gonna be a rule that assigns a real value to an ordered pair like x and y instead of just x, we can write the output as a function of x and y, and often we're gonna think of the output as a third variable value like z. All right, so a function of two variables really is the next step up from what we've been seeing so far with a function of a single variable. So instead of writing y as a function of just x, we're now writing z as a function of two variables, x and y. And so we have inputs and outputs for these functions of several variables. So the inputs are still gonna be the domain for our function. And so now we're gonna think of the domain as a set of all ordered pairs or points x comma y that we input into our function f. The range is still the set of all outputs and that's still gonna be a single number. It's now our z values. And so if we're trying to write it in our more formal set notation, the range of our function is gonna be the set of all outputs or the set of all z values such that z is equal to that output for our function f, which is a function of x and y. And that's gonna be the collection of all those z values for each ordered pair x comma y in the set d, where d is referring to the domain of our function. All right, so let's go ahead and do a quick example to familiarize ourselves with these functions of two variables. And so in this example, we're gonna let our function of two variables, f of x comma y, be defined by the equation where in the numerator, we have the square root of x plus y plus one, and in the denominator, we have the quantity x minus one. So we could also think of this equation as z is equal to the square root of x plus y plus one over x minus one. That is equivalent notation. It's the same as when we had uh, y equals f of x notation. We could swap out y with f of x. Well, now we have uh, f of x comma y, which can be swapped out with z. And so in this exercise, we're asked to evaluate the value of our function at the point three comma two. We wanna find the domain of our function, and then to finish it off, we're gonna sketch the domain of our function. All right, and so there's nothing really too tricky when it comes to evaluating a function of two or more variables. You just have to find the values for your inputs and then plug them into the appropriate places and then simplify. So here, we just have to make sure we're keeping everything straight and in the right order. So our first variable in the input is our x coordinate or x value, and the second input is gonna be the y value. So if we wanna evaluate f of three comma two, we have to replace x in our equation with three and y in our equation with two. So our numerator is gonna look like the square root of three plus two plus one, and our denominator is x minus one or just three minus one. And so if we simplify everything that we see here, we end up with the square root of six over two. And so now we know for this given input, when the input is the point or coordinate three comma two, the output of our function is gonna be the z value of the square root of six over two. And so we could also write this as a ordered triple, x comma y comma z, and then we can think of plotting that point in three dimensional space. So if we repeat this process for every single ordered pair in the domain of our function and then graphed all those points as ordered triples, well, then we create the three-dimensional surface that is the graph of this function. But we're not trying to take it that far. In this example, we're just trying to evaluate the function and then find and sketch the domain. So we've evaluated the function. Next up, we need to find the domain for our two-variable function. So finding the domain for a function can sometimes be tricky, but there's a few things we need to keep in mind that'll help us when trying to find the domain of a function. And these are basically like little algebraic rules we have to make sure we are not breaking. One of them is we cannot divide by zero, which may happen in this example. So we have to avoid dividing by zero. We can't take the square root or any even root of a negative number. So we have a square root involved in this function. So we have to make sure that that quantity x plus y plus one is always positive or it can be zero, but greater than or equal to zero. And so for our example here, there's two things that can go wrong in our equation. We can have that quantity underneath our square root, x plus y plus one become negative. So we have to make sure that this thing is never negative because we don't want to work with imaginary numbers. And so that means in order for that quantity in our numerator underneath the square root, to never be negative, it has to always be greater than or equal to zero. So we require that x plus y plus one be greater than or equal to zero. And at the same time, we have to make sure that our denominator is never equal to zero because we can't divide by zero. So we have to also have 
x minus 1 not equal to 0. Okay, so this really is a decent little description of the domain of this function, and we might just rearrange this first one a little bit. It might be nicer to write our inequality in like a y equals mx plus b form, or a y is greater than or equal to mx plus b form. So just moving some things around, we can rewrite this as y is greater than or equal to negative x minus 1. And so our domain is going to be the set of all points x comma y such that x minus 1 is not equal to 0, or in other words, x is not equal to 1, and y is always greater than or equal to negative x minus 1. And so that is a description of the domain of this function, but it might be easier to kind of visualize the domain of this function if we graph the domain. So I mentioned earlier how if we put all the uh, outputs and input information together, we can create an ordered triple and plot that in three-dimensional space. But when we think of the domain or the set of inputs, they're ordered pairs, so it's often nice to visualize them in the xy plane. Um, or even project that onto the xy plane in three-dimensional space. And it is going to be most common for z to be written as a function of x and y, but we can interchange these variables and move things around. It's essentially just going to change our reference frame and how we label our axes. All right, so back to sketching the domain of this two-variable function. We have to sketch both these curves, and the domain is going to include the points that are uh, described by both of these equations. And so first, let's think of x minus 1 not equal to 0, or x is not equal to 1. Well, if we think about what does the graph of x equals 1 look like? So x equals 1 is just a vertical line going through x equals 1, but we, says, we say x has to not be equal to 1. So we have to avoid this vertical line at all costs when it comes to picking a point to plug into our two-variable function. But we have to also avoid the points x comma y that make that square root quantity negative, and we'll avoid those points as long as y is greater than or equal to negative x minus 1. So what does this inequality uh, look like when we graph it? Well, to start off with, we graph the border of this inequality, which is the line y equals negative x minus 1. And so it'll have a y-intercept at negative 1 and a slope of negative 1. And so here is the graph of y is equal to negative x minus 1, but our inequality says we need all the y values or points that are greater than or equal to this line, so that's going to be interpreted as being above this line. And now we have a visual representation of the domain of this two-variable function. It's going to be all the points that are above this line that are not having coordinates where x is equal to 1. So actually graphing this function by hand is going to be pretty complicated, so we might resort to using some technology to help us do so. If we do take the time to look at the graph of this function, this is what we should see. And then if we actually go ahead and look down our vertical axis or our z-axis from above, we'll actually be able to see the domain of this function. And we do see that the graph of this function is only having points where x and comma y are in the domain that we have sketched together.